So I would like to bring it back to the original version after this short demonstration. Just keep the original uh, get line to get the entire line of input and get rid of this and get rid of this and uh, essentially get rid of this portion and bring it back to the to the original uh, form uh, the way it was. So to continue with this, instead of just this silly echo back to the user, I would like to actually collect the input and store it as a sequence of strings. A vector is a facility to keep uh, collections of elements. It's very easy. In fact, uh, what I can do is um, I will say standard vector and uh, <clears throat> I will name it uh, input input strings. Right, so I have uh, uh, some strings that I'm expecting the user to enter and now I would like to store them in a vector. Now before I can create a vector of strings what I need to do is I need to specify that this indeed will be a vector of strings. So these angled brackets right here, angled brackets, they specify the type of element that the vector should contain. A vector is, a, is synonymous to an array or collection of elements, or we also say sequence of elements. Right, so name it any anything would like uh, you'd like. So here is my input strings. This is now a vector object, and like I said, instead of echoing back this uh, input, uh, I can now collect it, and I can say uh, in, uh, input strings push back input. We can say um, append new uh, text at the end of the vector. Okay, so this is what pushback does. It's like appending at the end. So then uh, I told the user that you can enter blank to exit. So this is like expected way to break the loop. And now I can create another loop. Let's try to use for loop with an index starting with zero, and this index is less than uh, this input strings vector size. increment index remember this is a unary operator increment and inside this loop i can now access all of the elements in my uh, vector of strings individual elements we can access by essentially using square brackets and some index next to it so this way I can, for instance, use uh, standard output to display these strings. Oops. To display the strings, uh, new line, and uh, just uh, perhaps here. I can type. Uh, you entered okay so I can tell the user how many strings they've entered Say so you enter this many strings and look how I print the size of my vector and then I print them individually. All right, so let's try to run this. 
Oh, um, strings. String. Right? std string is the type to contain inside a vector. So let's fix that error and build it. Um, right now, I'm seeing that is seeing the warning. It gives me the warning that uh, there is a, a sign on sign mismatch. But I'll address this warning after running the program and make sure making sure that it runs correctly. So let's uh, run this, and it says please enter some strings or blank to exit. So I type uh, uh, one two three and so forth a blank string and it says you entered uh, three strings right, so basically this is the behavior that we get uh, at the runtime so I'll just duplicate this here for our recording because the recording isn't capturing the uh, the windows outside of uh, Visual Studio and this is what I've been you know what I try to do right so I enter three strings then blank string and then I got this prompt so you can see that I have a loop here which starts with zero index is a loop controlling variable that starts with zero and I compare index with the size of the string now notice how size is three so I've entered three of them and the vector knows how big it is currently, what is its logical size or how many elements it contains. And uh, I keep my index within the boundaries of this uh, vector and I print uh, uh, my input strings by using this uh, square bracket notation. Right, and uh, mm, this square bracket notation or subscript a subscript operator, or uh, also known as as a as an index, simply, right, allows me to access individual elements of the vector. So this program works as expected. We have part of our presentation here when we speak about. Uh, Our conversation about the vector part of uh, chapter 4 discussion here if I jump back to our notes right right here uh, vector data type you can see that we have very nice illustration of what's happening let me just close this uh, view and move my code to the vertical tab group right here so we can see it side by side in our case uh, uh, vector v, the way it's being named over here, is named uh, input strings, right? So this is like this is the vector v that uh, is present in this illustration. So the vector stores internally its size, which is available through the size member function, like we tried to do this twice already. Input size and input size in two places, right? And now we can have an index which starts with zero, right? And then we go uh, create a loop that increment, increments this index at the end of the each iteration. And we loop through zero, one, two, three, and four, okay? And so this is, uh, this is the, the, the content of our vector. Now, our vector, of course, uh, is an object over here, which is managing a dynamic block of memory, which contains the actual elements. Of course, all of this memory is allocated dynamically. Uh, when we just create the vector originally, uh, right here, it's empty, right? So right here, vector is empty. It has no elements, but we begin to push back elements into this vector and it keeps starts growing right so this area of memory keeps growing and we can actually add thousands and millions of elements to this vector right it could grow uh, to a significant size we can actually later remove these elements if if we want but here is just convenient to have a container that I can accumulate values and then you can see that I have a loop which uses the index uh, to access individual elements so this is how you access individual elements as illustrated over here 
v0, v1, v2, v3, v4, uh, with uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are being the index. And in my case, index starts with 0 to be able to iterate through all of them. So uh, to demonstrate another, uh, another option here, for instance, if I wanted to bring this um, a vector in reverse, starting from the last element. Right? So if I wanted to uh, redo this, I would very likely have to start with um, index that starts with input string size, right? right at the end of my vector. But you can see that here, if I have five vector elements, uh, the index of the last element is one less than the size. So therefore, I have to probably subtract one from here. So that now index is the index of the last element, right? So this minus one is needed to reduce size, which is five, to four, which is the index of the last element. Okay, then I can proceed to my condition. <clears throat> to work on this thing and uh, my condition should be that index is uh, uh, is uh, uh, greater or equal zero right i should not uh, continue beyond zero so as soon as i reach zero i should terminate the loop and this time because i'm starting at the tail of the vector i have to decrement the index when i go so hopefully this loop uh, will uh, will make it uh, you know uh, will make the iteration through the vector. Let me build this. I right, build, and uh, let's see how this works. Let's run this, and um, I'm entering simply one, two, three, four, five. Hit blank string, and you can see that uh, it worked very well i'm happy about this and this is the output that it produced which is the opposite the essentially printing inputs in the opposite direction right so this is uh, exactly what uh, we were hoping to get reverse uh, order okay <clears throat> Another quick demonstration for you, because um, iteration through the collection of all elements in the container is very popular. In fact, uh, subscript notation allows us to um, uh, have a random access to any element, right? Um, however, uh, in cases uh, when um, we want to visit all elements sequentially, starting from the beginning and going through the very, uh, very last element. There is another loop that we can use. 